the point. 98.7 CKPM FM. Chris Wilson is here. How are you, Chris? I'm doing great. You? I'm doing excellent. Now, you are a Coquitlam City Councilor. You are the lead in the Kids Sport Tri-Cities. You're the head of Operation Red Nose. You're part of the Rotary Club. What don't you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, just talk to my wife. And she, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But you're, you're a busy guy. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I like being involved in the community. There's lots that needs to get done, and uh, I'm happy to be part of it. And, and you got time to, to go to CrossFit. Uh, were you there with uh, Joseph this morning doing the CrossFit thing? I don't know if I, I did the 7 15 oh. class. I think Joseph might have been in the 6 o'clock class. Yeah, uh, one of my new friends, Joseph Choi, who does this shelf genie thing, uh, said he knew you for the CrossFit, and I thought, you guys have more courage than me. I don't think I could ever make it through one of those CrossFit classes. Well, uh, a good friend of mine, Dave McCloskey, was on me for about three months to try it out. Yeah. So I finally tried it out, and uh, and it was a lot like the lifting that we did when I was wrestling. So a lot of it just kind of has come back naturally, and I'm really enjoying it. That's good, and and Dave's a, a pretty active guy, too. He's got to be. He's a firefighter and a real estate guy. He's always running. He's he's, he's very <laughs> active, yeah. Yeah. Um. So I, I wanted to talk to you because we are uh, one week into an election, three weeks left to go, and... I get kind of a feeling out there that people are a little, um, other than, than immediate friends and that, but a lot of people don't give a rat's behind again. Do you get that feeling? Well, I think that happens generally around the start of campaigns, unless people are really, really angry about something. Um, so I don't think there's the same kind of anger um, that there is when, when you know people are really uh, focusing on it. But I think, you know, three more weeks are so left, and, and I think... Uh, you know, like every election, as we get closer, people will start paying more attention. Um, you know, I had a long discussion with somebody on the weekend about, you know, all political parties are the same. And so we started talking about, you know, the liberal platform and the NDP platform and the green platform. And, you know, he just hadn't really paid close attention, hadn't really looked into it. And after the discussion, I think probably I finally convinced him that there, <laughs> there is a bit of a difference. Well, yeah, there is a bit of a difference. And some people, and I mentioned it to you off air, that they go with the devil they know because it seems to me that, uh, like I think what your friend was saying, and a lot of people think that, is they all seem, because they all seem to lie, this is provincial and federal. I'm not talking about uh, uh, your local, your, your city politics here, because you guys are fantastic. Uh, but the um, the provincial and federal, they all seem to lie. Well, and you know, and I ran in the last provincial election, but I never uh, was elected, so I, maybe I, 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 I'm a little bit naive to this. But I, I think, I think, unfortunately, sometimes um, you don't know what you're getting into, right? Sometimes uh, you may may have the best intentions, uh, best on the best knowledge available. For example, the NDP platform is based on Ministry of Finance figures, so I'm hoping yeah. that, that you know we can count on Ministry of Finance figures. But sometimes you get in there and you realize, oh, geez, I didn't know you know this was the case, and I didn't know that had already been committed. And so, you know, I think sometimes they may people may perceive it as lying, but really they didn't know. Other times, yeah, they downright lie, right? Um, yeah, because they know that um unfortunately they're they're doing that to get to get elected right and, and you being very close uh you're, you're very feet on the ground you have your ear to the ground here and you know there's a lot of issues that affect us here in, in tries actually all throughout bc they seem to be whatever affects us here in in tri-cities that needs to be done through most communities what are the biggest issues of selection I think a general issue is just affordability, right? We have ICBC rates going up. We have hydro rates going up. We have the housing issues. Um, you know, we're trying to fund TransLink. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, governments need to really, or, or parties need to really look at that and figure out, you know, what can we do so that, you know, for, for the, the bulk of the population, we try to, to help them out somehow, right? Um and so, you know, um, people say, well, you know, tax the rich. Well, if you tax the rich too much, they'll move to the U.S. or they'll move to Alberta. Um, so you got to be really sensitive about what you do. But, but uh, you know, I'm a little more center left, and I, and I really like what the NDP is talking about in terms of reinstating the 1% tax on people making over $150,000. Um, you know, the liberals brought that in and, and, uh, and pl promised to phase it out, and they did, but I don't think they should have phased it out. Um, there wasn't a big, huge, you know, uproar from, from, from high-income people saying we're overtaxed. We have the lowest taxes in Canada, in, in, in B.C. So, um, you know, I think, I think we need to, to redistribute a little bit more than, than, than what's done uh, in the past. And, 
do what we can to try to make things a little bit more affordable for people. It's very hard to do anything about affordability when it comes to real estate. That's that's a huge, huge, very difficult issue. But you know, things like hydro, things like ICBC, we've got to stop raiding the the reserves of these companies. Well, we do, um, but but here's the thing. Okay, so you spent the better part of your life growing up here in BC, right? And you you know the 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 services we had when the population was not as great as it was. The costs were down. Now the population is growing exponentially and the services are getting worse and you'd think that because the population is growing there'd be more taxes going in to keep the same services, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Well, you know, we, we've had a forest industry that's, that's been in, 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 uh, in decline uh, for a lot of years. Part of that was the recession in the U.S., but part of it is, you know, we've, we've allowed far too many raw logs to be exported, right? And so we've had, you know, almost 100 mills closed down in B.C. over the last seven or eight years. Um, so I think we need to really focus on what are the things that, that, that are our bread and butter? What are the things that, that we can, we can um, support to try to increase government revenues? Um, and I and I think uh, forestry is one of those things. Um, oil and gas again, it, it was in a, it's in a glut. There's not much we can do about that. Um, but but you know the 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 what we've relied on for far too long is the real estate uh, industry in in the Lower Mainland, right? And then the construction and the real estate agents and the insurance and the appliance sales and all that stuff. And that's great and that's made our economy strong. But it has done nothing to help the underlying economy, which which we need to have there once the housing boom uh, goes away yeah and uh, you remember because at one point there used to be a lot of rental units and then government came in and i can't remember what it might have been the social credit government i can't remember which one but said okay now all you people that own these apartment blocks you can start selling them off as condos so they don't have to be rentals anymore they've got to get back to that point where people can actually rent and be and have affordable rent and it, yeah, it was two things. It was one. It was that allowing allowing um, apartments to be uh, stratified. The other one was when the federal government got out of the rental game, right? And the federal government used to provide really great uh, incentives for investors to invest in rental units. And when they got out of that, uh, stopped inv- uh, providing those incentives, and then a number of years later, they transferred um, the responsibility for rental to uh, uh, provinces. And in our province, you know, there hasn't been rental built in, in almost 20 years in general. Now it's starting to come back, but only because interest rates are so low, only because pension funds are doing anything they can to get some kind of yield, and only because rents are skyrocketing because we have no rental. Nobody can afford to buy, so they have to rent. Supply and demand, it jacks the rents up, and now it's a lot more economical to rent. But we need the government to to, to get back to providing more incentives, um, to 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 rental because uh, we have a huge huge uh, uh, unpent uh, un, unmet need for rental in, in our area. We do indeed. Uh, Chris Wilson is here. He is uh, uh, first and foremost a, a big uh, I guess uh, keeper of the communities. Uh, kids try sports. Uh, sorry, kids sport tri city uh, operation Red Nose uh, the Rotary Club. You're also a Coquitlam City Councillor. And uh, you've got a little bit of political knowledge. You're also an Olympic uh, competitor, too, which is kind of cool in the wrestling category. Um, now, there's a, uh, a candidates meeting, all candidates meeting. Tonight is the first of four, and it's happening at the Evergreen Cultural Center at 7 o'clock. Yeah, tonight is for the Coquitlam Burke Mountain Riding. So you have uh, uh, Jody Wickens, the NDP candidate, Joan Isaacs, the Liberal candidate, and Ian Souter, the Green candidate. So, yeah, it would be a great, uh, great all candidates meeting. And I think, you know, if people are kind of not been paying attention or they're sitting on the fence, you know, it's a great opportunity to come, meet the candidates, you know, hear what they have to say, see how they carry themselves in, in a in a public situation. And I, I've been involved in all candidates meeting. It's extremely stressful. Um, and so you get to see what the people are like under a little bit of pressure and, and, and learn a bit about the platforms. Yeah, and it's trial by fire because public speaking is one of the toughest things to do. And, you know, you, your mind might be going one way, but you might get stuck on a question. And it's a really tough, tough, tough thing. Totally is, and I really want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting on one in each each of the yes. ridings because it's a lot of work for them to do, but it uh, it really helps uh, showcase uh, you know what the party's platforms are and, and who these candidates really are. Excellent, uh, Chris Wilson. Thank you so much for being here this morning. My pleasure.